I'm Barbara Haya, and I'm a PhD student at the University of California, Berkeley, doing research on international climate change policy. I'm focusing on in India on this often overlooked but very critical feature of the Kyoto Protocol called the Clean Development Mechanism, or the CDM. And what the Clean Development Mechanism is, is under the Kyoto Protocol, under the current climate change treaty, industrialized countries have caps and developing countries don't have caps. The idea is that industrialized countries could invest in projects in developing countries that reduce emissions and use the emission reduction credits towards their own targets. The idea is that since greenhouse gases are well mixed in the atmosphere, it doesn't matter where they come from. So if it's cheaper to reduce emissions in India or in China, why should industrialized countries not be able to avail of those cheap reductions? And what I've been finding in India is that Unfortunately, the majority of projects under the Clean Development Mechanism don't actually reduce emissions. And there's a lot of political will to continue the Clean Development Mechanism or to expand it, and it's essential that we acknowledge how poorly it's working so that we can replace it with something that works a lot better. The main problem with the Clean Development Mechanism is that the majority of its projects don't actually reduce emissions. The idea of the CDM is that it enables projects to go forward in developing countries that would not have gone forward anyway. So the extra income from the CDM, from carbon credit sales, enables a project to go forward. And the reason why this is important is that any project that would have gone forward anyway isn't reducing emissions. An industrialized country that purchases the credits from the project is able to emit more than their targets, but nothing's actually reduced on the ground in the developing country. And we're seeing that the majority of projects going forward are projects that would have been built anyway. Three quarters of all projects that are currently registered under the CDM not only started construction, but were completed and up and running at the time that they were successfully registered. Many of these started construction before the Kyoto Protocol entered into force and before the first CDM project was actually registered. Another problem with the CDM is that there's no, there's no clear way of preventing projects with human rights abuses or social and environmental impacts from going forward under the CDM. And we're seeing some projects with pretty severe impacts and abuses of communities that are affected by the projects. 25% of all CDM projects are hydro projects. Many of these are large hydro projects, and around 60% of these hydro projects are in China. China is the world's most prolific dam builder, planning to build 10 to 12 gigawatts a year in the next 10 years or so. And around one third of those projects are currently in the CDM pipeline. Large hydro is a technology that's been around for a very long time and a technology that has a lot of entrenched interests already. It's often built when it's not the cheapest option because it's preferred as a large project involving players that might have political power. This is not a technology that needs support. We need a mechanism that will effectively direct money towards activities, policies, programs, and projects that really do need support, that we really do want to be supporting as the future technologies in a low-carbon world.